Welcome. Um, appreciate you guys taking the time to speak with me. And congratulations on winning the uh, table read my screenplay from the ISA. That's huge. Really, Thank you. congrats. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and co-writers too. You know, it's this. I don't see that as often. So I'm definitely interested to hear a lot about your process. And so how your story came came together. Um, but first, just if you don't mind giving a brief intro as to who you are, what you're currently working on. Fun fact, if you want. Um, I can go first. Um, I'm John Ferraro. Um, I'm a TV and film industry professional. Um, currently working on a Scarlett Johansson directed feature um, called Eleanor Visible, uh, starring June Squibb. Ironically, she was the lead in one of the Sundance films. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of revising another feature that I'm in, that's in the works. Wow. I'm Steve Coy. Um, I live in San Mateo, California, and uh, I'm, I write features and television, mostly comedy. So it's unusual that uh, this script has garnered some, you know, renown uh, because it's pretty serious subject matter. Um, there are some jokes in there, but, um, you know, this is not my, my typical script, but, you know, um, it's not a typical uh, process either uh, that it, you know, by which it came to be and uh not a typical um you know subject matter either right it's a it's an important thing to talk about so really uh honored to be able to uh, tell this story with john here and uh they were all his jokes by the way um uh, i'm the <laughs> drama writer uh that's so it's a it was a good a good marriage yeah that's awesome and um i saw thelma at sundance that june squid movie it was yeah. amazing so. we did we steve and i did too it was yeah we, we so much it. fun Working with her favorites. has been working with her. She her charm just oozes even in a in a more dramatic film. Um, there's comedy elements as well, but she just oozes charm on screen at 94 years old. It's it's incredible. It um, really is. Um, and for people who haven't seen that movie, I don't know when it's coming out. I hope it's coming out soon. But Thelma, she's it's like an action comedy. Honestly, <laughs> she's she's doing all kinds of stuff in that movie. It's it's, nice. it's like a Mission Impossible. Storyline, but June's reduced to the smallest <laughs> possible scale. Um, so yeah, we we both loved it. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember someone making that joke right after I saw it. Like Tom Cruise, who June Squibb's yeah. here. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, she she had, and she told me she had a really good time filming it. Um, it was in her neighborhood pretty much, so it was very easy for her to you know get get to set every day. Um, but she very much enjoyed filming it. And now I'm like, well, welcome to New York. Uh, <laughs> this is in LA, but uh, we've had a good production so far. And uh, she's wonderful. So I was told that, um, you know, you collaborated on this script. And I'd love to hear about what the story is, what the script is. Um, but also, I was told that you didn't meet and you had never met until Sundance, which you guys did get to go to Sundance. Obviously, you saw some great films. Um, but how does this even come together? Like, can, give me a little bit of this, uh, the origin story here. Um, well, yeah. I can start. Oh, well, I was going to say, I was going to pass it to Steve when, when we got uh, to the Twitter of it all. Um, <laughs> so I came up with the original story back in 2019, finished the first draft in COVID, which honestly really helped because I was working full-time on set, had no time to write. Um, and then it had garnered some you know, quarterfinals, semifinals, placements, but nothing really significant. Uh, and as I was, the busyness continued, I tried to reach out to a few people for reads and a mutual on Twitter uh, recommended Steve. He was doing free reads um, for scripts. And so I said, why not? I have literally no time working crazy hours. And so I connected with him on Twitter um, and he read the script. And then he actually DM'd me and wanted to talk about it farther um, because he was so moved by it. So I'll let Steve pick it up. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes when I get stuck working on my own things, I like to read other people's material so that I'm still kind of working the same um, screenwriting muscles. And um, so sometimes I'll go through periods where I'm just like reading like a half dozen things a week and giving notes on and um, I pride myself on my notes. I think they're pretty detailed and useful, but sometimes you just read something and you go like real, real deep um, above and beyond. And so um, I read John's draft and really, really connected with it. Uh, I'm a father. And so the sort of family 
uh, dynamics of the script uh, were, you know, moving at times, heartbreaking. And I ended up writing like nine pages of notes. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, some people would pay $150 to ISA <laughs> to get those notes, but uh, John got them for free from Twitter. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, look, man, uh, this is an unusual kind of proposition, but like, you know, would you mind if I actually worked on this uh, with you and, um, you know, kind of took a crack at it. And so, you know, he said yes. And I, I wrote my take on it. And then we just kind of tossed drafts back and forth, probably like a dozen different, you know, uh, revisions to get it to the point um, where it was the version that we submitted to this table read my screenplay script. Um, and also to the, the Nickel Fellowship, which we got, you know, the semifinals of this year. Um, so, yeah, very, an unusual, you know, only online kind of thing um, where, you know, a lot of just coincidences uh, happened. And, you know, uh, that's that's what happens in the online age is you never know who's going to, you know, you could people meet managers, people sell scripts just based off a log line on Twitter. Um, so it was a nice bit of serendipity to bring us together. And, um, you know, I think that John's uh, dramatic strength, like he mentioned, you know, meshes well with my sort of bleak humor <laughs> and cynicism <laughs> about the world, uh, especially around this subject matter. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's why it resonates, because it's, you know, it, it's a really relatable family drama um, at its core. And it just happens to take place in this this environment that's very politically resonant right now. Yeah. No, and and just to to Steve's point about um him kind of reaching back out to me and giving me all these notes, I I really was impressed with because you do you submit to not um, ISA they they have actually given me the best notes. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. Um but you submit to coverages and sometimes you get very generic sort of parameters and just hitting the bullet points and Steve kind of dove, you know, very deep into this. Um, and I was impressed. And then obviously, as he said, we, we went back and forth and kind of built this brand new climax sequence um, all the way to the end. And um, it was, it was really, really a, a wonderful process, even virtually on two different coasts. Um, and then, yeah, from Twitter to Sundance. We met in person for the first time. I didn't even recognize him in the airport. I didn't think he would be that tall, to be honest with you. You I never know heights on Zoom. It's, it's I walked different. right past him and he said, hey, man. I said, oh, hey, what's up? And I'm six <laughs> foot. So it was um, uh, it was it was kind of surreal um, to 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 go from from that kind of happenstance to a real fulfilled uh, Sundance experience. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously you were providing your script to get notes and to get some feedback, but did you ever expect to get kind of a writing partner out of it? Did Would you ever have ex <laughs> predicted Oh No, this? no, I, I didn't. I mean, I went into, and it, even the original idea was just, I was driving to my now late grandmother's house and um, it was the imagery of the boy in the striped pajamas at the US-Mexico border. And I was just like, I'm going to write this myself. And I did like... COVID helped, the lockdowns helped, but then I, I just didn't expect, we did, a, I mean, I did a lot of peer reviews and peer reads from my colleagues at, in, in my uh, university. And I didn't, go, I didn't go to film school. So these were professors and these were students who had an interest. I was a journalism major. Uh, so I did heavy, heavy research into all of this. Um, and I even um, got a, a current immigration lawyer, Luis Canales, who's a Honduran immigrant uh, to read. He was the final read before I copyrighted the original draft. Um, so I never intended to get a co-writer. I was just kind of trudging along. And I think, yeah, it just happened that Steve was so moved by the material and I really didn't have any time to have a fresh set of eyes on my own work that I liked what Steve had pitched me. He said, I'm not going to blow up your plot. I'm going to enhance the character dynamics. What if we make Amber, who was originally a love interest to Josh, um, his sister? And it was kind of those things that drew me in. And I said, okay, he's really taken this time. So 
I didn't expect it, but I'm glad it happened, of course. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's serendipitous. I think it sounds very serendipitous. Yeah. And, you know, from my end, uh, if I don't like a script, you know, you get half a page and I say, <laughs> good luck, you know, and I still try to be helpful, but uh, it's really rare that I will connect with something and, uh, re and, 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 and want to, you know, be a part of the world. Uh, certainly have never done anything like this before, have written with other people before, but not like jumped on a, on a draft of something and sort of begged the writer, can I, you know, please <laughs> ride this train with you? Um, so I think it's just a testament to the emotional connectivity, you know, that John puts into his writing that was able to, uh, you know, yeah, just, just right there on the page uh hit me you know right here and i i just you know there's a couple couple scenes that i just wept uh as i was uh, as i was reading it and i said you know i'd love to help make this you know the best version uh that it can be and i didn't you know i just thought oh some notes but then it just grew into this this whole other thing i think i texted Over you when when you when i when i said when i agreed to you know, have you write the past? I texted him and I was like, I really kind of want to keep the montage sequence at the end. And then we just kind of dot, 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 back and forth. And then this, and what about this? And then um, it was really, yeah, I was really, there was no kind of, we didn't butt heads a lot. I think because we both saw the, the, um, the greatest potential of the story, because literally this is a story that has never been told in a feature film like the setting has never been kind of tapped into there's been docuseries and there's been you know 60 minute specials and there's been news stories and all of these things but there's never really been something that is in this world in this environment McAllen Texas immigration facility and this is the first and I think we both know that this is such a crucial story to tell mm -hmm. for so many different people um that it was that mission and our kind of love for writing that brought this to you know the winner of the isa table read competition so super yeah. grateful i think that's super lovely too just um kind of the power of storytelling that it brought you know two people that didn't know each other together just to to work on something because they both believed in it um so tell us you know tell me about your your uh your feature please <laughs> I, I feel like you. i was just gonna say <laughs> we, we we should been uh, we should explain <laughs> what this uh what detention is about so a uh, detention is a feature drama and let me see if i can memorize the log line here it's a um uh, a queer half mexican uh, teenager who's living at the border in McAllen, texas um he is kind of grappling with his um, his sexual identity and, and just his identity, period. And uh, he goes to work at the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Processing Center down in McAllen, which is the largest in the country, um, for his father, who is the warden of the place. And in so doing, he comes to connect with um, a few of the migrants that have, are passing through um, and kind of develops a very complex, layered, nuanced relationship with one of them um, and 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 helps you know helps him and his brother survive and eventually escape the facility. Um, that's not exactly the logline. It's a little bit of a riff on it. You know, I think a logline is supposed to be twenty five words or something. Um, but that's it in a in a nutshell. And um, you know, me being a dad and John being um, from a small town uh, and growing up as a young uh, queer kid, like we both kind of bring our sensibilities uh, to this project. And, um, you know, you see the news, you know, every single day um, on this subject matter. Uh, it's it's highly relevant. It's going to be relevant. It doesn't matter who's in office, you know, what administration is, uh, is, is in power. The immigration crisis in America is, you know, it's a humanitarian disaster. And there are people uh, all over who want solutions for it, but just nothing is getting done about it. So, you know it's might seem kind of naive to say what if our film can you know turn some heads um get people to care about this subject matter in a new way but you know films can do it fingers th fingers crossed yeah yeah the power of storytelling like you said yeah. yeah and i think to to um build on what steve had said 
this to me um is all about humanizing the immigrant as well not just you know figuring out how to solve this issue which i don't have the answers and none of us do on zoom but humanizing the immigrant because what i found in the early early peer reviews uh peer reads from my colleagues um one of the professors that read the script um actually visited McAllen and visited that processing center and the very very first draft was very racially divided a lot of white people working to cage you know Hispanic, Hispanic Mexican um, Guatemalan uh, migrants and he told me he said no you know a lot of Latinx people work at this facility because they have to provide for their family they don't it's the biggest job in town it's the best job in town it pays very well so my mission for this was you know regardless of which side of the border you're on should not determine the quality of life that you have um, whether you're born 10 miles south of the border or 10 miles north of the border and a lot of these people do, like Steve said, what they need to to survive this crazy world. Um, and it's not out of malice for their own people. It's because they have to work there to feed their own families and maybe get out themselves. So it's so nuanced. It's so detailed. And thanks to Luis Canales, like we were able to really, I was able to really get the cultural nuances correct and the legal terminology is correct and paint this picture but yeah, at its core, what I want to do, and as Steve said, maybe it's naive to think that we're going to change them. We're not going to change everybody's mind. Um, we may only change three people's minds, but film and writing can can change people. Yeah. Characters can change people. The 24-7 news cycle might not might go in one ear out the other because we're just fed all this information all the time. But a character in a film for two hours might actually connect with you, resonate with you, and leave an impact on you. And maybe you think, man, like that could be me. I could have been born like that, or you know, on the other side of an arbitrary line. And then my life would be drastically different. So that's kind of my mission with the script. And, and Steve, I think explained the story beautifully. Oh, also, not only is you know he working for his father, but his father is estranged. Um and kind of moves Josh, our protagonist, moves back in with his father after years uh, of being apart. So that's yeah. another wrinkle as well. And the the sort of political compass that uh, John just alluded, I almost called him Josh because that's the character's name. <laughs> um, John just alluded to of like, there's, there's Latino people who work at these places. There are white people. There's people who, there who are sadistic, I'm sure. There's people who just want to put food on their table. There's people who want a government job and a government pension. Um, that that mix of uh, demographics and rationalizations for working there was something that really appealed to me. And I wanted to just blow that out and, you know, give even more uh, depth so that, you know, you've got this main character who's thrust into this environment and then everyone who's around him represents some kind of, you know, political or ideological bent that he absorbs in his time at the facility. And then come the end of the story, he decides I'm going to forge my own path. You know, I'm not going to be like any one of these people, but I'm going to, mm -hmm. um, you know, come into my own. And, uh, you know, it's just a really, really powerful idea that you can choose your destiny and choose to be what kind of person that you want to be. Um, hopefully a good person. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like and, a and really Amber, powerful story. A really, a really quick point on Amber, who's, who's went from love interest to, sis, to his sister. Um, she's a journalist herself. So that there's also another wrinkle. She works for the local paper. She breaks a story about an ice raid that um, this ice raid in particular affected Josh and Amber's kind of um, aunt, not blood aunt, but this woman, Rosa, knew Josh and Amber's mother very, very well. And she was taken in. Um, and Dan, the father, knows or knew Rosa was undocumented, but that was his exception to the rule because of his wife who had passed or his ex-wife who had passed away. There's just 
insane amounts of layers and we can go on all night but i know we, you <laughs> don't have time um but i highly suggest that people kind of dive into this and also you know watch the table read play out because we have we have some beautiful actors i don't want to segue for you but i was just <laughs> plugging in. yeah um the, the, yeah the, the talent no. uh that, that was cast in this is great and you know shout out to the isa um you're 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 right christy usually it is a table read in person there's people sort of crowded around you know a table or on a stage and i'll be honest i was a little skeptical about how it would come across through zoom but it really works um and there's a certain advantage in it because you can do multiple takes you can edit things together um and uh you know even if you have two people in zoom boxes if they're just you know tilted in facing each other a little bit it's like it it's uh, the suspension of disbelief is there. So it's really cool. It's been a really cool process and want to, you know, thank the ISA for putting it together. It's a, it's a real production. Yeah. They've, um they've done quite a few of these too, especially during, you know, the pandemic um, where mm -hmm. it was kind of forced to, so they definitely know what they're doing and they're definitely a lot of fun. So you recorded it and it's coming, it'll be actually shown live on, I'm assuming the ISA chant, like they have a link for that where you can yeah. sign up. Um, and that's March 13th. Yes, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. Will there be a um, Q&A type of thing yeah. as well? Awesome. So there'll be a Q&A at the end. We'll do introductions, um, the recorded, produced table read, and then a Q&A at the end. But I want to echo Steve's point. Oh, well, a few more questions. I don't want to, like, step on you at all. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, no, I want to echo Steve's point about casting because I was equally as blown away at the talent that the ISA casted and the way that in one dry read, two rehearsals, and then one recording, they were able to capture some of these characters so, so well, so brilliantly. And as Steve said, you know, you cheat them, you know, through Zoom and you kind of cheat the, and, and Rhea, our director, was also phenomenal in understanding the blocking like you know virtually um but yeah you cheat them one way and they're like kind of in the same room and then they play to each other that way even though they're not they're not in the same room it was it was unbelievable and as you said the multiple takes getting it right inflections um and the fact that also some of them are bilingual and we had we enhanced i think the read and the performances with them being fully uh, one of our um characters Miguel um he the, the the actor who played Miguel fully said his lines in Spanish and it was beautiful and it adds so much to the read um so all of those things and again thank you to the ISA for for casting and being so smart in their casting um and obviously Ria our director who was wonderful and sort of getting everybody on the same page and and getting what, what we wanted out of the the actors uh, it's just a short period of time. Um, I was also skeptical, as as Steve said, just because I've been on countless sets. Uh, <laughs> and it's so beautiful to see two actors in a room play off each other. So playing on Zoom was was interesting and fun. And um, Chrissy, as you said, that they will they've done these before and they're pros and 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 I trust them fully. Um, to make this something that we can, you know, take this to someone else and, and they can also help us get it out there. And who knows what can happen after that? Because it really, you can read the page and obviously get moved by the page, but maybe you get moved by performances. Maybe there's a scene that somebody's even listening to on the 45 minute commute to work in LA and right. they're listening and they hear, wait, what's that scene let's read the full thing so uh couldn't be happier with the process it's uh it's movie magic it really is so uh <laughs> hopefully people come and check it out yeah and so i just love to ask um how important do you believe if, if you have the time for you know another question or so um it is for something like the isa and for tools like that and for contests like this um for a writer to be able to really um get their their stuff seen I, I think I'm well equipped to answer this because I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old. I don't live in Los Angeles. 
I can't move down there. I have two kids, you know. Um, it's it, the contests are like one of the best tools in my arsenal. So to be able to um, get this in front of of readers with experience um, and get some nice feedback and and you know you can't win them all, right? Like I've only ever won one screenplay competition, um, but it's a huge deal. And um, you know I should also call out that this contest was free uh, for me because I'm an ISA Connect member. So you know I actually placed in another competition and got a free. ISA Connect membership, which meant I could enter this contest for free. So it's like a, this, you know, virtuous cycle. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, the people there are um, at ISA, they really care about the mission and, you know, they, they, they hook it up. So it's, it's really important. And I don't want to um, give away too many secrets, um, but when we were, <laughs> okay. uh, when we were with, um, Felicity Wren, who's the um, C not COO, she's the VP of development. VP of development. There you go. Thank you. My nine o'clock brain. Um, and then uh, Caitlin, who's uh, their marketing uh, person. They they were, and she's also a reader. Both of them are readers. And they um, they were saying that they have criteria that you know the the person who runs the the feedback department. Um, is very, very uh, adamant about hitting, not just hitting criteria, but but giving rich feedback, yeah. not the generic feedback. And even if you don't, if you feel that your work isn't good enough yet, or if you're, if you're kind of workshopping your own script yourself, I think hearing what Felicity and Caitlin had to say about their reading process and the whole reading, the reading process as a whole, I think, that's kind of the first step and it's it's not as expensive as other coverages um it's actually pretty reasonable um for a full read and 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 the coverage that you get will be well worth it um yeah as steve said this was a free competition he he um sent in for us uh and you never know what can happen and and maybe to the re to the writer who doesn't think that their work is ready. Maybe, maybe you give the free competitions a shot and see where it goes. Um, but yeah, these tools. I mean, no, no writer ever thinks their work is good. You know, we all no, have yeah. this like kind no. of neurosis <laughs> about it. Um, um, I'm a horrible writer. And that's, and that's the other thing is the you know the validation of this is like okay, well somebody somewhere <laughs> out there you know agrees that like this is a good story. It's it's a story well told, right? That's the yeah that awful feedback that you get when somebody doesn't <laughs> like it um i mean so, there, you know, are, and there are no's that, too i mean there they've there have been plenty of no's like i don't want to think that this is just a seren like the, the totally serendipitous process steve and i have you know we we placed in nickel as a semi-finalist we won this competition and we've been you know boxed out of several competitions with the same exact draft and it is it is startling how different and how subjective things are. Um, but I do think going back to your question, um, the ISA, not only connecting writers and they have, I think also actors under their umbrella and directors, I think as well. Uh, I think it's mostly writers, but um, connecting people to other industry professionals, the connections that they've made, it's, it's a growing network and we're glad to be a part of it. Uh, the ISA family. I mean, we've we spent five days with Felicity and Caitlin. I feel like we're uh, we're good. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. And I was just gonna um wrap this up. I was gonna say, was this your first time at Sundance? It's a quick yes or no. Yeah. Did you have a favorite yeah. movie? And then we can. I'll let you go. <laughs> uh, my my favorite movie. I think both of us uh, agreed that a different man with Sebastian Stan. Nice. Was like just a tonal masterpiece. Like kind of outrageous heartrending, you know, pitch black humor, um, but also deals with uh, notions of like representation and storytelling in a very nuanced way. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, the directing was phenomenal, limited to maybe three setups max per scene. As an aspiring director, I was pulling that, pulling the writing. Um, <laughs> yeah. We were blown away. And also to see it with no trailers and nothing, um, everybody naturally reacting to everything was super cool. But yeah, a different well, man you. for sure.
Okay. <laughs> um, I loved a real pain. I didn't see a different man, but um, both three, three word answers there. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Congratulations again. I'm looking forward to joining and seeing your, your table read. I'll be there. And um, yeah, just thanks again and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Christy.